You're listening to Tory Writers She Said What podcast. I'm Tori along with Marcy Persky. Depending on where you live, there's a variety of things to do on your day off. Where I live, you can volunteer for the next election. Where Marcy lives, you can have an excellent time perusing a collection of petrified poop. I had a really interesting day. Oh. Yeah. Josh is here with baby Kane. That's Kane's dad. Yep, Kane's dad's taking care of him. We were trying to figure out something to do because we were originally going to go take a walk around the lake, that the walk, the path that you took. It, oh, the, the nice lake, the little reservoir yeah, with the eagle yeah. nesting there. Yes, over at Kaibab Lake, but it was 86 degrees, so it was kind of like... And the baby probably wouldn't enjoy that much either. Oh, yeah. Use the baby as an excuse, so, of course. Well, here's what we did. I went to my first gun show. I've never in my life been to a gun show. How was it? And there it? was a gun show out at the at the rodeo grounds. Ah. It was interesting. Did you come home with any guns? No. Oh. No. But we just looked at them and stuff. No, they're really heavy. Even like the little ones, they're heavy, and I couldn't hold them in my bad right hand, my bad right arm. You and, know, you know what a gun wuss I am, right? Oh, I know. But see, the reason that we have a gun in this house is because there, at least a couple times a year, there's rabies. There's either rabid skunk, rabid fox. Rabbit, you know what, you know, and that's when you need a gun because you do not need to be charged by something with rabies. You don't want something with rabies in your backyard. You don't want it near any of your animals. We don't worry about and all any of our critters because we have an eight foot fence, and you have to be really desperate for food if you want to climb an eight foot fence. So, and a lot of our friends are hunters. We are not. Frankie's a hippie. He's not a hunter. <laughs> but I, I've i learned how to, like, cook elk. I've never had venison, but I've had I've made, like, elk steaks and elk snossage and stuff. Snossage? Snossage. What's snossage? It's like sausage, but it's from the elk, so we call it snossage. I thought that was a dog treat. What do I know? <laughs> oh, it probably is. So but, what were the so characters? So we went to the gun show. Yes. There were a, a lot of women wearing vests, which I didn't understand. You can keep your um, ammunition in there. To what? I guess you can keep your spare ammunition in there. Yeah, well, we don't. That's the funny thing is, we do. We have a gun here, but we have no ammo. <laughs> so That'll bad. really help. Yeah, I'm sure you'll I wave that at a rabid animal, and the animal will go, "Oh yeah, sure, I'm Bye. leaving right now." <laughs> so after after that. We went, we said, what should we do now? And there's a new place in town that opened since you've been here. And it's called the Pooseum. And it's a museum of poop. Oh, fabulous. Like fabulous. Dinosaur poop. There's like, and it tells you what kind of dinosaur it came from. <laughs> and there's little poops and big poops and it's free. I would hope. And, and the baby had just pooped. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Do they have a place for you to throw the dirty diaper out? No, I had to go to, over to the gas station. Well, what kind of a poseum is that? Smash it in through a... Here's another thing. The gas station right next door to the poseum has a big, you know, one of those big uh, garbage can things. Dumpster. A truck comes. Yeah, dumpster, that's what you call it. But they had it locked. Why would you have a dumpster and have it locked so that people can't dump it? Because they're it? next door to the Poseum. That's why. Well, I, I managed everybody to get going... it open far enough to shove the poopy diaper in there. And so we're, we're at the Poseum, and Josh is carrying Kane around. And Kane really likes the echo in the building. It's ah. something he's never experienced. So he was talking a lot. And there's a statue there of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay. And it says right next, um, really big, there's a, a plaque that says stinky. <laughs> I don't know why. 
but I said to Josh, put the baby up next to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the and plaque that says picture. stinky. Yeah, perfect. So he does that. I take the picture. He picks the baby, and the baby pooped on the statue. <laughs> and I said, well, that's legitimate because we're in the Poozeum. And Josh, and Josh says, no, I can't leave it there. Well, that was considerate. But, yeah, so I went to a gun show and the Poozium all in one day. What I want to know about the yes. Poozium, like, is this meant to be a family thing or a thing for yes. little kids who are going to giggle themselves silly? And also, whose idea was it, the Poozium? You know, I don't know whose idea it is. But once I got in, I mean, it's all, like, petrified poop. It's not, like, fresh because it's dinosaur. <laughs> and it tells you, like... What kind of animal it came from? Important. And I don't know how they know this. Well, that was my next question. How do they know which poop is whose? Man, the biggest dinosaurs, um, you know, the ones at the the gas Sinclair gas station. Oh, yeah. Those dinosaurs, they have the most giant poop. I was like, I could drown in their poop. Oh, what a lovely. Yeah, that's delightful. And then they had, like, crocodile poop and alligator poop and some more contemporary poops. Lovely. Lovely. You don't want to neglect the modern artists of poop. No, and then you could buy your kid, like, a stuffed poop. Oh, like oh, a yeah. fuzzy brown poop. Yeah, for a while there, when that meme was new on the internet, all the kids were giving each other that for birthday. Like, the birthday gift at high school was one of those little piles of poop. Yes, I got a uh, cane of Tyrannosaurus Rex. Poop. I didn't want to give a guess this is poop. another one of those things where you wonder about the poor people in the factory in China that have to make it. Like they the spend poop? all day making a stuffed poop thing, pillow thing, and then you got to wonder. They're working themselves silly. They're making pennies an hour, and what are they creating? Little poop stuffed velour poop pillows, and you have to wonder what they think of America. I mean, how would you feel about a country that paid you like five cents an hour to run a big, expensive factory machine making a stuffed poop? Well, I'm sure they've made weirder, unfortunately. I don't know. I, that one and refrigerator magnets. I just, the stuff, I wonder what the people who make the birthday party crap, the disposable tourist store crap, the dollar store crap. I wonder what well, they think not of us. All of it is made in China. Most of it is made in China. You have, to, you have to read. Some of them are made in Afghanistan. I don't know. I'm sure they also wonder, <laughs> although they've already been told we're the great Satan, so I guess they have yeah. an explanation already. So today, uh, my job today was to drive two friends. If you want to know what's a difficult carpool, it's two. Of it's it's three women who are used to being in charge, that that yeah. <laughs> three women who are used to being in charge, and I just had to take a deep breath and think well, that this is why I love all these women because they're used to being in charge, but you know everybody wants to tell you where to go and that it's a stop sign and how to <laughs> use your phone app and how to read the and what we went to do was get out the vote, and we volunteered to get out the vote. Uh, nearby us, about an hour and a half away. And we, we'll get anybody. This is nonpartisan here. We'll get anybody's vote out. But it's interesting, the people that you run into, and I had to deploy all my charm because we were getting people out to vote or at least informing them that they needed to get out to vote and asking them if they needed absentee ballots and all that stuff at an assisted living facility where we were not supposed to be. That a big sign. So Did you get kicked out? Well, they sort of tried. They said, you're not soliciting, are you? And I said, oh, no, no. They said, you're not wa- just walking the halls and knocking on doors. And I said, oh, no, we have a list of specific people we're, we're looking for. Really? Did yeah. you? Yes, I did. It was in my phone, a list of specific people who've been known to vote in the past, but they're infrequent voters, and we want to make sure that they vote. Yeah, I've, I've actually done that. Because it's the one times. thing they can tell about you. They don't know how you vote, but they know whether you vote and how often yeah. you vote and for in which election you vote. So so they know, do you vote every time or do you need a little kick in the ancient tuchas? 
a little kick in the ancient tush. So, well, how do they get out to who? vote if they're in assisted living? Well, I mean, just because you're in assisted living doesn't mean you're immobile. There was somebody there babysitting a grandchild and plenty of people who could get around nicely. And that just means that there are people on staff and um, there's a, you know, game room. And, and here's the worst part. Want to hear the worst part? Yeah. My friend, one of the women in charge, says, I signed <laughs> you up on Sunday. We're all going up to help get people out to vote. And this is a town right in Wisconsin, just near Illinois. And uh, it wasn't until I said, yes, sure, absolutely, that I remembered to have the spousal unit check to see if there was a football game on. <laughs> we had volunteered to uh, to walk and get out the vote starting at noon, the same time the Green Bay Packers game started. Oh, We're, well, that's bad news. Yeah, well, and let me tell you, what would be worse than having to walk to get out the vote during the Packers game. What would be worse than that? Um, traffic? No. The only thing worse than interrupting a Drunk. Packers game is interrupting a Packers-Vikings game. <laughs> uh, Nobody interrupts games here. Well, because you live in the middle of nowhere, and besides... I don't answer the door. You don't answer the door. That's right. You know, the last time I went doing the get out the vote thing um we were told anywhere where there's a no trespassing sign don't go do not go and so we wound up i think we got three houses <laughs> this didn't say no trespassing it said no soliciting no campaigning but we weren't doing either of those things and i got to help one woman put her her uh application for an absentee ballot in the mail so that was nice, nice. which is legal by the way you can mail somebody's application for an absentee ballot for them. Um, I would always get asked, why do they need all that money? And it's a really good question. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was a really good question. And I just keep getting texts and texts and texts and texts asking for money. And I'm like, when do you have enough? That That's an interesting question. You, you know, might that's as well... a lot of money that could go to something better. Well, my seeing as it goes to my industry, it's the only thing that's keeping radio going these days. Does anybody listen to AM radio? I was wondering that today. I was driving Clifford the Big Red Truck today. Yes. I could get one station, and it was a rap station in Phoenix. Interesting. Yeah, and, and then I flipped it on AM, and there was nothing. And I'm like, did all the AM radio stations go away? You probably have no AM antenna on your truck. It doesn't have a lot of things, like the back doesn't open, two of the doors don't. I would worry more <laughs> about that, really, I think. Worry more about that. Yeah, I had Clifford, so we took Clifford to the gun show and the Puseum. You know, it fit right in, didn't it? Yes, it did. How'd people it like did. the Grateful Dead sticker on the back of it? I know, there's no... Frankie explained to me a long time ago why you don't put Grateful Dead stickers on anything. I don't put any sticker on anything. You get pulled over. Yeah, I don't I don't put any sticker on anything. You probably get bumper stickers all the time in the mail with all of those envelopes asking for money. They they come with the sticker and you think to yourself, exactly who is going to be convinced by this bumper sticker on the back of my car? This is not going to make me any friends. Bumper stickers can only lead to bad behavior and humiliation. I had a solar energy bumper sticker on the back of my car sometime around 1976. And when that car finally died in the middle of the road and I had a, solar, that, yeah. had a solar energy bumper sticker on the back of it. Yeah, I felt extra stupid, extra, extra <laughs> stupid. And I, that was when my eyes were opened about the whole bumper sticker thing. I don't like the people that put like their whole family, like mom and dad and then 12 kids. I've seen For some, some reason, that annoys the heck out I've, of me. I've seen some that are, are send-offs of the little family. They have, like, little X's in their eyes, or they, yeah. They're dead? Yeah. The dog is dead. The dog has, like, little X's and is lying on its back oh, with its feet Oh, that's there. awful. Oh, see? You don't care about the stick mom and dad and all the stick little kids. 
<laughs> you didn't care about the a minute ago, the mom with her like, feet I up like in the air, dogs. little X's. Yeah, you don't care about the mom. You don't care <laughs> like about the kids. Yeah, people. apparently you do. Well, that I don't I think that's everything everybody needs to know today. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 